don't know what it is, Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back, you already know the routine, subscribe, like, dislike, comment, turn the bell on, all the things that make YouTube what it is, so let's jump into this, man, today we're going to talk about weapons you didn't know that were weapons, things you never think could be a weapon in prison, now I'm going to give y'all some, some weapons I've seen used personally and that I know have been used that you don't hear a lot about. Now, when it comes to prison, the first thing you think of when you hear somebody got hurt, you think of a shank, think of a lock, think of something around, you know, that type of stuff. That's not always the case. The thing about prison is people are very, very creative. You're going to see things you never thought you would see. Dudes have nothing to do but sit in their cell all day and think. And with that comes some ingenious but dangerous shit. So this first one I'm going to give you, I seen in Philadelphia, 19 years old. I'm locked up on a robbery charge and I'm just doing my bid. And I'd seen a lot of fights, been in a lot of fights at this point. You know, experienced a lot of violence. But on this day in particular, I seen something that if you had to have me guess of things I'd see, I never thought I'd see. I see two dudes arguing, and the one guy goes in his cell, makes himself what I thought was a cup of coffee, and takes it to the microwave. The other guy kind of shrugs off, you know, their argument, bitch this, bitch that. They did all that. So you know it goes without saying that it can't just die there. You can't let somebody call you out your name, disrespect you. Bitch, you do not call somebody a bitch unless you're 100% looking for wreck. <clears throat> That's what was about to happen. This guy takes his cup, this clear white tumbler cup to the microwave. Looks like it's coffee in it. Heats his coffee up. I didn't really pay attention to the fact that he had been heating the hell out that coffee. Like it was past the point of drinkable. It was, you know, every bit of what we call a buck 90. Now, buck 90 is when you heat water up to the point that it's 190 degrees. It's boiling. It will scald your ass. Now, I'd seen dudes in the past, and even after this incident, get hit with buck 90. It's a nasty, nasty thing to see somebody get scalded with water like that. They get the blisters from the third degree burns, the big red marks, you know, instant damage. Well, on this day in particular, this dude heats up his coffee. He gets it out the microwave. And like I said, I was kind of watching the situation because I knew something was going to go down. And the first thing I picked up on is that when dude reached in the microwave and got it out, he got it out with a piece of a shirt. I guess it was too hot for him to hold. He makes his way across the pod. You got this dude standing at his homeboy's cell, most likely still talking shit, you know, talking about dude. Dude walks over and says, yo. And when he turns around, he throws his stuff on him. It hit him, and this dude squealed like a pig. Now, he's under the impression, we're under the impression, this dude just got buck 90. He just got hit with scalding water. Until the point that he took his hand and he went to go wipe it off, and when he did, he wiped off layers of skin with it. He kept trying to wipe, and as he was wiping, the skin on his face was coming off. This guy had gone to the microwave, Mixed up a coffee shot. He took a spoon of coffee, put it in the cup, added three quarters hot water, and the rest was baby oil. Now, if you can just imagine what I'm just telling you, he heated up water and baby oil. Two things that do not mix. Now, one thing about it is once you throw it on the skin, it's not like water. It just doesn't splash and go away. It splashes and it sticks when the two combine. He had just hit this dude with boiling hot oil that is used to you know rub on your body whatever you're gonna do with it this was not its intended purpose i'd seen this done in years to come with fish oil hair grease anything of that nature and it's just a disturbing thing when you see it because it takes everything off it disfigures you for life it takes the layers of meat off all the way down to where it's just red flesh that was a disturbing thing to see so that's going to come in as you know number one number two would have to be 
adapters. Now they sell these small TVs. Now they actually sell TVs that just have a cord on it, like a regular TV you buy. But they used to sell these small five inch Magnavoxes, five inch Kobe TVs. And they had, even with the CD players, they had an adapter that you had to plug into the wall. This big black adapter that you know, weighs a couple pounds. Same thing. I hear two dudes in a cell one night arguing, and you just hear funk, funk, funk. Dude is next door, and has done took the adapter and wrapped it up inside a sock and dropped it down in another sock, and has commenced to beating his cellmate with it. Now, I worked maintenance like I told y'all, and we would have to paint, we'd have to do mechanical, electrical, and all that stuff. And I was glad I didn't have to paint this cell. Because he beat this dude unconscious, beat him to where it changed his life, you know, disfigured him for life. The guy got more time and they locked this cell down under investigation so the investigators could come in and take pictures of the splats and the blood marks and all this stuff. And I remember we came off lock and the cell was on the top tier right above me so I could hear him through my vent arguing. And I went up there and looked and there was blood on the ceiling all over the walls and it was like every time he would swing this thing and hit him and swing it back the blood from it would just splat across the ceiling i'm not gonna say it was disturbing to see because i had seen much worse and i knew the adapters could be used as a weapon but that was my first instance of actually you know knowing for fact and seeing the aftermath of it number three is rocks when i mean rocks i mean like you would think that prison wreck yards and stuff like that wouldn't have these big rocks laying around. But where I was at at Greensville, man, you could walk and pick up a boulder. When I mean a boulder, a rock this big if you wanted to. Rocks of all different sizes, from the size of your fist to pebbles to actually you could reach down in the dirt and pick out a rock as big as my head if that's what you wanted to do. And I don't know what situation led to this. I don't know why these guys got to beefing i didn't know they were beefing i saw the aftermath but this guy walks up behind this other guy sitting on the bleachers with this big ass rock and just goes directly up behind him and just boom bashed the back of his skull in hit him two or three more times after he fell and hit the ground and then took the rock when he was laying on the ground and just threw it at him as if he was just throwing it at the dirt as hard as he could crushing his whole skull in they came out there you know, everybody on the ground, they hit the horns, and we laid it down. I don't know if that guy died or not. We, it kind of got hush-hush after that, and that happens a lot in prison. The guards won't say much. Every now and then, somebody will start a rumor, and you'll hear it. it may or may not be true, but they kept that shit on the ultimate hush. And I never heard the outcome of it, but I can pretty much guarantee you that dude either died, or he's, you know, if he did live, he's not a... Not the same person he used to be, man. And for the other dude, if he didn't have life already, that'll get it for you. Now, the next one is about a guy I've talked about in some of my videos by the name of Wild Man. And Wild Man got his name because it's everything that it sounds like. He's a wild man. Like, he's just nuts, man. That dude was just crazy. <clears throat> he lived in a cell, you know, many years right next to me. And his name was George Shelton. I'll never forget it. And I have another story I need to give y'all on George that's that's crazy. Where he tried to hire me to actually help him kill a prison counselor. If y'all want to hear that story, y'all let me know in the comment section and I'll throw it together for you. It's fucking nuts. But anyway, he comes out one day and he's got this legal work. And he's an older man, you know, probably in his late 50s. He don't read all that well. Me and Wild Man were cool. He said, Jay, come here, let me holler at you. So I walked over, sat on the bench beside him. He said, look, I'm trying to push my appeal through on that assault at Nottaway. And I was like, all right, what you got going on? He was like, well, just read the paperwork. So I start reading the paperwork. And as I'm reading, he's talking. I'm, you know, he's talking. I'm reading, so on, so on. I'm asking little questions. And I come to find out that while Wild Man was housed at Nottaway, his brother you know, a couple of years prior, had been killed by a man, and the man had been caught. You know, his brother was shot, killed down in Richmond. The man had been caught and thrown in prison for it. 
somebody comes to Wild Man on this day, and on the day that he's told is the day the incident happened, and they tell him, that's the man that killed your brother. He looks at the man. I'm not sure if the man resembled. I'm not sure if they looked anything alike. He was just told by somebody else, hey, I'm positive that's the guy right there that killed your brother, man. A wild man, you know, he had no speed but normal and fuck off. Like, just goes the fuck off. It was guards versus inmate day, which was something they did up there at the time, softball. Now, you'd probably be like, wait a minute, y'all play softball in prison? We have a lot of games we play in prison, but softball is just one of them. Wildman told me himself that he watched a guy for a little bit walk laps around the track. And he said this went on for about 30, 45 minutes while he just contemplated what he was going to do to him. Not contemplated if he was going to do anything, what he was going to do to him. He said he first thought about going to one of his friends and getting a knife and just ending him and stabbing him up right then and there. He said, but he was so angry and had so much rage in him, he didn't feel like that was going to be enough. So the guards had just finished batting. They went to their side. The inmates were up for bat. Dude was lapping behind the bleachers that are behind home plate. Wild man walks over there, picks up the softball bat in front of everybody. Walks up behind this dude and bong! Cracks his skull with this baseball bat. He then proceeds to hit him four more times with it to the point that the report that I read said the bloody bat was recovered with a big dent in it. He beat this man so much with this aluminum softball bat that he dented it and creased the bat. He then kept walking after he ended this dude around the track. Guards had then laid everybody down like they always do. They've hit the horn there in the towers of the rivals. Get down, get down, get down. Boom. Everybody, you know, hits the dirt. And they ended up getting the warden to come out there and say, Wow, man, give us the bat. Shelton, give us the bat. It's over. You, you, know, you did what you did. Give us the bat. Told him, y'all ain't putting me in cuffs. I walk myself to the hole. And just like that, he dropped the bat, walked to the gate, Walked down what we call the boulevard and headed to the hole. Now, this guy went on to survive and was pretty much declared mentally retarded after this attack, after this beating. And the worst part is, it wasn't even the right guy. It was not the man that killed his mother. It was a man in there doing time for auto theft that had nothing to do with Wild Man, Wild Man's family, the murder, had no idea who a wild man even, even was, or his brother was. But, just like that, you know, he almost lost his life. And I'm not sure if I would have rather lost my life that day or come to the recovery and realization that that's what life would be after that beating. Now, this last one I'm going to give you was, was, was something that I saw personally that will forever be ingrained in my mental images and my brain. And that was two dudes arguing over a mop bucket. Over who was going to use the mop next to clean their cell. And this guy said, fuck you, you can keep the mop bucket. I got something for you. This was a big dude that this little dude said that to. And the big dude just kind of, you know, they were both struggling over the mop. Big dude just took it and was like, yeah, bitch, whatever. You know what I mean? And push it off. Now, I expected right then and there something was going to happen, but it didn't. This actually took several days, and they had called Law Library, which is somewhere you can go to work on your legal case, push your appeals, habeas corpus, your writ, all these different legal things. If you're trying to, you know, they did something wrong in your case, you're just trying to get over on the system and get out. If you're innocent, whatever it may be, you're going to the, the Law Library. So... I wasn't going. I was sitting on the phone in a chair watching everybody line up. I always put my back to the wall so I could see what's going on around me. And I see him come out of his cell. And immediately I see he's got a sock in his hand. And I know immediately, you know, right then and there, what's about to happen. He's about to crack this dude. I don't know if there's a lock in there. There's a rock in there. I don't know what's in there. This guy, at the time they sold these radios that took these D batteries. Big-ass D batteries, the vibrator batteries, the 
boombox batteries, that big ass battery that goes in mag lights. He had one of those in a sock and walked up on this dude and he swung. And he was trying to hit him in his face or crack him in his head. But what happened was the battery came in sideways, hit him in his eyeball socket and lodged itself where this man's eye once was. The guy snatched away from him, put his hands up and immediately realized that he had something protruding from his face. He gets the scratch and gets the pulling at it and there is a sock dangling down with a D battery blasted into his eye cavity. This man freaks out. All the fight in him, all the gangster, all that big stuff, straight out the window, gone, done, over with. All he could think, I guess, was, I just lost my eye. And I remember sitting on the phone just being like, oh, shit, what did I just see? Like, my people are still talking, and I'm just looking in amazement like, First of all, this is crazy to see. Second of all, I can't believe I just saw this. And third, what the fuck? Like a small amount of blood and fluids is running down his face. And this dude now has no eyeball. The other guy, when they, they popped the door to let the guards come running in, he just stepped out into the sally port and handcuffed him and walked him off. Crazy, crazy, crazy things you see, man. Now, like I said, I always try to leave y'all with something positive. I don't want no, no kids and nobody in the bedrooms trying to make no weapons or doing anything stupid. But the moral of this story is, is stay out of prison. Don't go to prison. There's nothing nice about it. You can hear the stories without having to live them. Live your best life. If I could go back and undo what I've done, what I've been through, and what I've seen at the snap of a finger, I'd be snap, snap, snap all day. But that's not reality. Reality is I've been through some things, I've seen some things, and I share them with y'all in hopes that not only they entertain y'all, but they deter people from ever going down that path. So y'all know what it is, man. This is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and y'all know there are some real ones. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.